And now please join me in welcoming MoMA's chief curator of film, Raj Roy. Thank you, Claudia. I came in the back. <laughs> Thank you all so much. You made it through. Very, very happy to see you all here. Please welcome our leading lady, our star, Taylor Russell. <laughs> Hi. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you so much for being here to share this with our audience. Um, and so we were talking a little bit backstage, and I want to talk first a bit about Luca Juan Nino, um, who I've um, I've known for a, a long time now since I Am Love, and have worked with him, and have been just awed by the way he's grown and engaged with emerging actors and to see him find you and um, for you to elevate this picture to the extent that you do is, is just remarkable. But, so he's this crazy, brilliant artist, but he's also a very unique personality. So I'm just curious, when you first met Luca, can you remember what he said to you? Like, wh wh what was your first encounter with Luca like? Um, he was on FaceTime. <laughs> he called me like this <laughs> and had glasses on and was in the middle of moving in somewhere in Italy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And there were boxes behind him. And it was very quick, but I felt like I had known him for a long time. Um, and then, I don't know, we were giggling and smiling a lot, and then he said he had to go. <laughs> and I thought, I wonder if I'll ever speak to him again. Because <laughs> uh, it was, you know, kind of funny like that. Uh, and then he asked if I'd read the script and went on from That's there. That's amazing. That's amazing. And did you actually then, did you have to rehearse or you just read for him later on? Like, what was the process of actually getting the part? Well, it's never happened to me before, but I did an audition for it. That's amazing. Which is amazing. If there's any actors here, <laughs> you know the anxiety of, of auditioning. Or maybe not. Maybe you like it. Um, <laughs> I, I have mixed feelings. Um, yeah, he offered me the role. I had one more FaceTime with him and the writer, Dave. And pretty. they asked me what I thought about the script and were prompting me. And I kind of gave them my my breakdown or my interpretation of it. And then he offered it to me. <laughs> I'm so curious, as I'm sure we all are, what was your interpretation of the script when you read it? What, what did you think? <laughs> Had you read the novel, first of all, or no? no. Yeah, so what were, yeah, what did you think? I, well, I thought, I, I mean, obviously I've never read any story like this before. <laughs> Uh, and I, thinking about it now, because I've talked about, or somebody's asked me this before, is that I, um, that I was struck by the love story and the oddity of this girl, but I really didn't think about the cannibalism of it, mm. um, which sounds strange and maybe is like something missing in, in my head, <laughs> but, um, but I, yeah, I, I was taken aback by this loner person who, uh, you know, that wasn't necessarily self-imposed, that was um, put up upon her based on, you know, her strange needs. And um, I thought, oh, I'd, I would love to tell a story like this because I don't, you get weird characters like this for women in, in film, but not all the time. And I don't know. I resonated with her on some level. I, it's in a way, to me at least, and please um, let me know what you think, but not necessarily maybe so strange that you didn't, it, it, the cannibalism of it all didn't figure out. You've done genre, right? You've done science fiction. You've done horror, right? You've done, you've been in a horror series. So um, you can understand that genre as a framing device for something else. And in this case, it's a framing de device for romance. Um, but when it came down to the brass tacks of it, 
and the actual acting out of that part of the script. Um, what was the process between you and Luca and like, just literally like, how are we going to do that? How is this, what's the mechanics of it? Like, did he have any special direction for you on that? Or um, was all that chomping you? <laughs> Instinctual? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, yeah, there were a lot of conversations about, about that. I was, that was a head scratcher for a long time for me, but I, um, we did camera tests in upstate New York a few months before filming. And I remember that, I don't know, I, I think I was probably overacting something like <laughs> overacting some of the eating elements, and he was like, <laughs> "What? What no. could that involve? <laughs> I want to know how you overdo that. <laughs> Do you oh like God, it's finger so licks or what? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> could you imagine that would be? <laughs> I wish, I wish I did that. The finger licks. <laughs> I don't no, sorry, sorry. I don't know. I just was overdoing it. No, because clearly <laughs> there, you don't there there's not an ounce of overacting in your performance. You re, it's a controlled you you're convinced that this is an essential part of the character and she's acting on who she is, right? She's being authentic to who she is. Yeah, I got all of that out before <laughs> the camera. <laughs> uh, which is why rehearsal is so helpful too cuz you can do things that you know you gotta you gotta push some things away to find what's underneath, um, and I was really happy that we had moments, Timmy and I, to be in character together and kind of see what that would feel like. Uh, so that was yeah. I wish I ha had rehearsal time and everything. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a it seems like an essential part of a process, perhaps, but. I wanted to start with the first scene as well, because for me, I mean, it's so visceral. It's so um, surprising in a way of where, you know, it is in the movie, right, right up front. So in that sense, we were talking a little bit backstage and I mentioned to the audience in the intro that like there were certain parts where I laughed, right? And and that part, I that the first scene I laughed because it's so genius that it's so, visceral and surprising and you know funny in that way but also sad because what it, of what it triggers right that the family unit has to collapse it has you have to evaporate you have to like leave behind this new life that you had just started and in a way it encapsulates a lot of the themes that then travel throughout the movie the visceralness the kind of surprise um and at the same time the eventual sadness. Oh, it's getting really bright. Hi. Um, uh, and I'm just wondering, did you, at what point in the movie did you actually shoot that first scene um, with the girls and the sleepover and all that? Was that, did you, you didn't shoot in order, so, or did you? No, we didn't. We didn't shoot in order. Um, but we kind of did in the way that the three men in the movie were introduced during filming around the same time. So I shot everything with Andre Holland first and then Timmy came and then Mark came. So that kind of was in sequence. Um, but the finger bite day <laughs> was, sleepover day, yeah. was at the beginning of, of filming. Um, and I'm glad it, it was because, yeah, that set a good stage for how to, I don't know. Na yeah, navigate the rest through navigate the rest of it. Right. No, it, it really works as a kind of introduction to the world we're about to enter into and gives you a lot of insight into who she is and the, the kind of like, there's a momentum, right? She's being propelled on this in something um, essential about her nature and, and that her father accepts in her. Um, I was wondering if you might be willing to speak to the personal side of like how you develop this character or if there was anything that you brought from your personal life experience to this. Um, I had read that you had a kind of itinerant um, upbringing that you, you did move a lot when you were younger. Is that, is that right? Or, and did that inform in any way like this itinerant character who is kind of always searching for a home and is constantly disrupted because of who she is and what society around her expects? 
Yeah, I um, I didn't fully realize at the time, but the way that her and I, the point that we meet very sharply is the um, the ungrounded aspect of our lives, um, and I think with her. And with me, you know, when you're younger, you don't necessarily, you can't wrap your head around why you're leaving a place or what goodbye means to items, to people, to, you know, your house. Um, and I think that there's a big part of her who really doesn't get what she is and who she is. Um, part of me thinks she, you know, you know on some level. But I f the confusion of that, the confusion of, of kind of getting picked up in a brutal way and thrown somewhere is something that I, in my own way, understood. And, and also, I think the other people that I know who grew up in a nomadic lifestyle um, understand this kind of acute loneliness mm. that um, is hard to describe. And I felt it with people throughout my life that I've met who, you know, their parents were like journalists or they were an army brat or, you know, a vast array of other issues <laughs> or <laughs> things. Um, and it's interesting that that is the, that feeling is a connective tissue between those types of people. Um, and I, I, I understood that about her pretty quickly that she felt like, on the outside looking in and could never penetrate the bubble of of th the people seemingly having a normal life um, yeah yeah no it's it's powerful and it comes through right that you found a way to to message and and transmit that um, dislocation that she experiences throughout um, of course we need to talk about your collaboration with Timothy Chalamet, with Timmy. Um, I'm curious, just right off the bat, like he has worked obviously with Luca before, fam quite famously. Um, was there any like secret code that they had that you, that they either like didn't let you in on or they let you in on? Like, was there working habits that um, you had to learn that they had brought from their previous collaboration? Well, I did feel both of them made me really feel at home in their family. Also, most of the crew, not most of the crew, but the heads of Karen Makeup, um, Peter Spears, um, who's a producer on the film, uh, and all of the Italian producers, they had all worked together on Call Me By Your Name. So the core people, had known each other for a long time, and I was the newbie, and, uh, you know, I was like, I can't believe I got in this, because I, like a lot of people, watched Call Me By Your Name and loved it, and loved their collaboration, and then finding myself here is the insane lottery ticket win. Um, for them. They got, they <laughs> yeah. won the lottery with you. That's very, that's incredibly kind. Um, um, but no, they, they made me feel like Luca would text me before we even did the film and just say that he was happy that I was his Marin and, um, Timmy and I had almost worked together on other things and wanted to work together. So that felt also very, um, you know, welcoming and, and they made sure that I was around at everything and that I was never excluded from a joke or a conversation. They welcomed me in immediately. So I, if I had any overthinking about it, it was only existed in my head <laughs> and very briefly. Um, but also, you know, they do have a rhythm of working together and they know each other in a way that I don't, I didn't know either of them at that time. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of like <laughs> the introverted person on set who everyone's like, what's your opinion on this? And I'm like, oh. I need two hours to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll get back to you and they're like, we need an answer. And I'm like, I can't give you one. <laughs> um, so, you know, 
that part of me is evened out by my collaborators like Timmy. He's quick like that. And and then, you know, you kind of you kind of balance each other out and there's a lot of learning. Um, but I felt accepted for that part of me. Oftentimes I can feel like, you idiot, like you just need to come up with something. <laughs> um, so that's good. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, to have that openness and, and obviously I, I would have um, guessed, you know, and that they would have been welcoming to you, especially um, since they had long wanted to work with you. But it's great to hear that they actually invited in your perspective on the process as well. Um, okay, so Andre, Timmy, Mark. We got to talk about Mark Rylance. I mean, so much menace, right? Like, if the, if there is something actually really disturbing about the film, it's his presence, right? It's not all the body eating stuff, whatever, whatever. Mark Rylance. It, I mean, because he's both. Um, a nurturer, right? Like he arrives as this person who's gonna welcome you to the tribe and, and show you the way, and then ultimately become potentially the undoing of that. Um, talk a little bit about, I mean, he's, he's also, he has such a different level of accomplishment in terms of film and theater, et cetera. Um, what was it like um, on set with him? Well, we always joke that he's our actor's, our favorite actor's favorite actor. That is who Mark Rylance is in <laughs> the this world. Um, yeah, I, I met him when we were shooting the carnival scene. He came to set in his Sully clothes. Mm. Um, and I was just so struck by him because he has... He has, his eyes are so, this sounds strange, mm -hmm. his eyes are very open and um, he's like a child in a way in his eyes. He's very vulnerable and fresh, I would say, about Mark, so. Huh. <laughs> I would not have, yeah, thank you, amazing. Yeah. He's a really good guy. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I would have, you know, we had some uncomfortable scenes together, but he was my, at every moment, you know, was checking in to see if I was okay, if I was hungry or tired or, you know, any, 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 any type of care he could give me, he was throwing my, throwing my way. And, um, and, uh, also this is not your question, but, um, at the end of the movie, he, Mark plays dice. He just plays dice all the time. Really? And he, yeah. Okay. And he taught me how to play dice and then gave me his dice and I carry them. I mean, they're in my, my bag. No. They're ev I go everywhere <laughs> with them. Um, so, I mean, maybe that speaks to the tenderness of his heart. But, yeah, I, I learned a lot working with him. He's always on set. He never leaves. I mean, in between every take, he's sitting by the camera and watching everyone and studying and... Um, being present. That's why he's so good, because he's so available. I love that Mark Rylance is your lucky charm in your, your bag backstage. Um, okay, so just like a little bit of a basic question, but you have to do a lot of eating in this. How did you, okay, I mean, there's probably the most basic of like, what were you actually eating? But like, how did you pace yourself? Like you ask if Mark Rylance were like, are you hungry? I'm like, how could you be hungry? He's just been like eating the whole fucking movie. But I, like, <laughs> I mean, again, it is, it's not an intellectual question, but like, it's a, it, this is a physical role, literally, right? Like, what was that? Like, literally, what was that? And like, what was that like for you? <laughs> well, literally, and maybe because we were working with Italians, but it was <laughs> not the whole, th okay. <laughs> there was a rubber body part element to okay. it, of course, because, you know, uh, VFX and stuff. Uh, it's kind of so embarrassing to talk about, but. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna answer. Um, uh, it was dark chocolate Ooh. and maraschino cherries okay. and fruit roll-ups. All right. <laughs> yeah, for the for the one that I, yeah, I only it wasn't for the finger that was that was really gross because it was just rubber and it smells so strong, 
But the one for me and Mark, it was that. But it's confusing because it, the rubber is so strong smelling and so gross. And then you're eating something that's really good <laughs> and sugary. And you're like, I am gonna, I'm on a high right now. Um, so that was odd. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, again, it's a it's, um, procedural question. But I mean, the physicality of what you had to do is, is also part of your commitment to the role, right? And, and that is not to be dismissed. I mean, that is, that's a big part. You, you gave a lot of emotion, but you also gave your body, yourself, as well to this. Um, and I think on a metaphorical level, there's many, many different reads, and I'm sure everybody has different reads, but there is the corporeal nature of what it means to give your entire self to somebody. And um, I'm just, if you had any thoughts or if there was any talk on set about like thinking of it at that level um, of really what you're actually doing is saying, I'm committing my entire being to you and to who we actually are. Um, like, did it stay at the script level because that's just where you needed to be? This was such an intense production or were there moments where you could actually kind of layer together on, on what the, the deeper levels of meaning might be? Um, the latter, for sure. I, I just knew that in my preparation for it, I, I had, you know, five months, give or take, with her. And I wasn't doing anything else at the time, so I had, I was thinking about her every single day. Um, and a lot of interesting things happened to me during that time period, but it wasn't until I got to Ohio, um, that... I was really giving into the the weird things around me that were kind of calling out to me, and there was uh, like there was one day <laughs> where I felt like I needed to go to the forest by myself and look for a river and find a fish. I don't know why. I yeah. just felt like I needed to do that, or she sh yeah. she needed to, whatever, however you want to think of it, or maybe. That was just me. Um, so I went and I was trying to find this river and this fish, and it was 40 minutes. And I was like, "Okay, this is this. I why I'm a young woman in the Ohio forest. This is not very smart." Um, but then I saw someone along the way who kind of pointed me in the right direction, and then I stood in the river and a fish came, like a very long fish. And uh, I did research after, and it was kind of a rare fish to see, things like that, which may sound like nothing to <laughs> all of you, <laughs> but is very big to me. Uh, things like that happened, and I just kept feeling like, okay, this environment is really supporting me to go as deep as I want to go with it. Um, and I love shooting on location because you don't, n you don't know the environment, you don't know anybody, you don't know anything, so you really get to explore. And we were all on that boat, so it all felt like we were kind of jumping off a cliff together. And, um, and so there was a lot of richness, basically, to, to, be, uh, to be felt around everywhere a, a lot of the time. <laughs> Thank you. That's incredibly generous that you would share this with us. So thank you. I'll be embarrassed about it later. No, you won't. <laughs> no, we'll be we'll be we'll blanket whatever embarrassment with gratitude. Um, so um, you've done this. You, you've gotten such amazing acclaim and well deserved acclaim. Um, won uh, a major prize in Venice for your contributions, and it's all pointing towards the future, though, right? Like this is this is a landmark in your career and you'll build from here. Um, I'm sure many people have ideas about what you could or should do, but I'm really curious what you would like to do now that perhaps you have some um, agency over what your future holds. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, because you, have again, you're like, genre you you've got the fan base right you've got this thing going on um yeah what what would turn you on <laughs> <laughs> um 
the simple answer is that I, I really want to work with incredible directors, like most of us do. If I could, if in my dream of dreams, it's that I'm working with, I mean, Luca was on my list, but a list of directors that I have that I would love to be, you know, in their portrait, however big or small, I don't really care. Um, I mean, I care, but I would rather be there. You know, I would rather be around people that I feel inspired by and challenged by and that I, uh, you know, admire. Um, so that's kind of the bigger, the bigger answer. But I, I don't know, I also, I felt like the coolest part about this movie for me was that it felt like a, an end of an era in a way for me on some emotional playing field. And um, what I've realized doing this job, this acting thing, is that when you look back, you can kind of see the the periods in your life and where you were mentally and emotionally and what was being reflected around you. And I feel like based on my, um, based on what I'm drawn to, even in what I'm reading, you know, the visuals I'm seeing, what I'm Googling and researching, all that stuff, it feels very different than the last, I mean, the last, I have been acting for 10 years. Um, it feels very different from that, and that's exciting to me. The fact that I'm in a new place within myself of wanting to tell a different type of story is exciting. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't. I have no idea, but hopefully it's something that I'm terrified to do, <laughs> and that I feel like, how the hell did they cast me in this? What did they see? Um, and then see if I can pull it off and figure it out. Well, I have every certitude that you will accomplish whatever you set out to do. We're so grateful that you could be with us. Taylor Russell, everyone. Thank you for coming to watch the movie.